The contracting um, subcommittee that I have worked on the last several years had a hearing on this subject matter in 2010, and I'm sure that some of you have had a chance to look at some of what we did in that hearing. One of the things that I was um, shocked to learn was this bizarre thing we have in the federal government where one agency sells to another agency and makes money off of it, which is weird. I mean, why is one federal agency making money off selling stuff to another federal agency? Why aren't, them, why aren't they all buying out of the same contract and paying less money? Um, is that still as common as it was when we did our hearing back in 2010? Um, I, I think agencies buying on behalf of other agencies and assisting in the acquisition, and therefore, because there is administrative costs to procuring a good, overseeing the contract, et cetera, taking a small percentage uh, for that service is something that happens. But selling... But we found... Yeah. Um, Mr. Jordan, we found that they were advertising. You know, one agency was saying, hey, buy from us, because they were depending on, I mean, it was, it was interesting because it was like a business model within the government where one agency was out hawking, you know, buy your stuff from us, buy your, you know, go through us for your contracts, um, you know, hire your consultant to help you with your contracting testimony at the contracting hearing through our contracting consultant um, vehicle. It was bizarre. I think one of the things, too, that's happened since then, uh, which shows a lot of the strides we've made in interagency contracting, is interagency contracting uh, itself is not, was on the GAO's high risk list at that time. This year, it was removed from GAO's high risk list. So that shows that a lot of these things of who's in charge of managing the procurement of that good service, the oversight, uh, and the shared responsibility between an assisted acquisition center and the end user needs to be uh, robust. And we feel like we've addressed a number of those things. And, and, Thankfully, GAO agrees, and, and it's really helped promote the right type of interagency acquisition. Would the, would the senator from Missouri yield for a second? Sure. Just uh, in the evening driving home, I listened to WTOP. Have you ever listened to the advertisements for contractor services on there? And how many purchasing people we must have in the federal government when they're going to spend that kind of dollars time after time after time to try to sell their product to somebody rather than it going through a process. In other words, they're advertising directly to the purchasing person that's listening to that radio show hoping to sell, not on price, but on service. Um, let me um, also, uh, Ms. Chaplin, I wish that you had data that would show that there has been some impact on performance bonuses from something like using strategic sourcing contracts. But our investigation showed, and I know Mr. Tangerlini has done a very good job of stopping this, but honestly, senior executive service bonuses, like the sun coming up in the morning, I mean, there really were very few senior executive service people that didn't see their bonus as a right an entitlement, no matter what, no matter what. I mean, I, we had a witness in front of one of my, our hearings that basically was not completely truthful about something. Guess what she got that year? She got her performance bonus. I mean, it was ridiculous. And so I have a hard time believing because when we looked, the vast majority of them were just getting them. There wasn't really an analysis going on. So if there are incentives, I would really appreciate you getting back to us and telling us what they are, because I think everybody was getting the bonuses. And if I'm wrong about that, I would like the data to show us that we were wrong about that, because that has been the common um, thing in the federal government. If you're SES, you get a five-figure bonus no matter what. Uh, we can provide you data on what we know about the DHS incentives. Um, we did not explore the actual results of those incentives, nor have we done anything government-wide with respect to that yet. It would be great, because, I mean, Senator Johnson's right. Until we incentivize this behavior, the incentive is to buy a lot at the end of the year so it looks like your budget is tight. The incentive is to not save money because then the money you've saved might go to another agency. Um, it is a counter-incentive, and we've got to figure out a way um, to clean that up, because until we have the right incentives in place, it's a little bit like the delivery of health care. Until we have the right incentives in place, we're not going to really ever do anything other than have 
with all due respect, I know you guys are doing better, but it's still a lot of councils. It's still a lot of him and hawing about guidance. It's still a lot of, hey, um, there's a new sheriff in town, and you're going to strategically source what you buy, period. I mean, that's what we need to be saying on this stuff. Uh, on food contracts, we also discovered um, pretty outrageous stuff on food contracts in terms of rebates. And um, uh, basically, I would like to find out, I, you told, when I sent Mr. Zients a letter in December of last year on the rebates the government is failing to collect from food service contracts. Uh, you stated that you recently met with key industry stakeholders to discuss food service contracts and seeing if we can increase transparency in the supply chain and recover some of that money that they are enriching themselves, I think unjustly, at taxpayer expense. What came out of those meetings, Mr. Jordan, and what kind of good news can you tell me on food contracts? Sure. So, uh, as you said, that you <clears throat> after he wrote the letter to Acting Minister Zients, uh, which brought it to our attention. I convened the industry stakeholders so I could get their perspective on what was going on, then uh, made sure to respond promptly. But since even sending that letter, we convened uh, DOD, VA, and USDA, and they're now forming a team under the Strategic Sourcing Leadership Council to uh, baseline their spend, compare their contracts, the rebates that you focused on, uh, it, rightfully, in that letter, um, and determine what the right path forward is. So they have identified team members already and um, plan to meet in the next two or three weeks on the SSLC path forward. So we did bring it under this management structure so that uh, we could make sure to capture any savings that were available. Do you um, think that there will be a government-wide policy on rebates for food service contracts? It's too early for me to say what the terms and conditions of the uh, strategic, strategic Sourcing Leadership Council solution will be, but I can absolutely keep you and your staff uh, up to speed as it progresses through the process, yes. So what do you think, six months, two months? Can you give us any kind of, um, I'd like kind of to hold your feet to the fire on this. Sure. Can I I'm follow sure you're not surprised at that. No, no, ma'am. Uh, can I follow up in, say, two or three weeks with what the path forward looks like after they've had a chance to meet? Yeah, I'd like a timeline so we can have some accountability, and uh, I want you all to feel like you're under the deadline of some timelines, because there's real money there, and it is outrageous if you really get in the weeds and look at what's going on with these food contracts. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.